painting, I'm choosing to do my first layer pink because of the flowers. So I am wetting my brush slightly, putting in some paint into the palette. This is permanent rose, really love this colour. But if you haven't got a rose colour, just use red and add white. This is to be wet. This is probably the only time tonight where you're going to really wet the brush. So I'm mixing that in and there's a little bit of white in here because I want this. This is an almost opaque colour. So I want it to, not opaque. This is almost transparent. So I, I want it to be opaque. So I'm adding some white to it. And it has to be runny. OK, think about watercolour. When we do a wash for watercolour, this is like a wash, right? Ready, steady, go. And you're just slapping it on. This is the easiest bit of tonight. <laughs> just get it on really, really quick. This is not as important as everything else that's going to go on top of it. So don't worry if your brush, brush strokes are going this way and that way. Get it on, but don't let it dry whilst you're doing it. You haven't got long because it will go streaky. So you want it to kind of all be one, like a wash, but it's called ground. So just get it on, not too wet, so paper will buckle. Don't worry about those brush strokes. If you are worried, lay off the pressure, okay, as you do your final sweep. That's it, done. Okay, blues. I have used cerulean blue for this lovely bright blue sky here. Don't have to use cerulean blue, you can use cobalt, you can use ultramarine, and white. Let's um, just top that white up. Have we got any more white to use up? I have. I'll just put that there for now. Okay, now the next brush we're gonna be using I found this little stubby thing in my spare brush pot and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that will do what I want it to do. This is kind of a, a stippling effect we're going to be doing um, for the next technique. This is a special brush called a sky stippler. This is the one I use when I'm doing my big paintings. This is the one I use, but I want to try and do, to use this one. I just think he's, you know, you don't want to go out and buy a sky stippler, do you? So I just want you to see that you can do it. And I've got this one, look at that. It's like something used to go up a chimney pot. And that's meant to do the same thing. So you want this, this is dry brushing now. We don't want any water now. This is slightly damp from this morning, so it should be okay. So I'm going to start off in the top left-hand corner. You can start wherever you want. You could probably start in the middle, but... I want my brightest blue to be in my top left and I'm going to be working down. Now I'm going to work really fast and try and finish this in about two minutes because I want you to work as fast as you can as well. So you take your stippling brush and one side you put on your cerulean blue. So it's dry, there's no water on it. On one side of the brush you've got your blue, your Cerulean, your whatever blue you want, and white. Pick up a little bit of white on the other side. I'm going to start off in this corner with the blue, and I'm going to do a round and round motion. And it doesn't matter if you don't cover, okay? Now I'm going to start to turn my brush and bring in a little bit of white. And I'm going to go back up, turn my brush again until all that paint is used up. And I'm going down and up. I'm working a little bit of white that got spilt in there. I'm working it in. Okay, that's probably about as much as I can do there. Now I'm going to load my gun back up again with some more white. I'm not going to go back into the blue because I want to fade out into white. Now work, don't go back in directly in. Work about a um, an inch and then turn the brush and work in. So you're turning your brush moving that white in and starting to blend it into that dark blue up there. You have to work quickly because it's all drying very quickly. Turning the brush all the time. 
So you don't really need to load that blue up because it's being activated by the moist white that you've just put on. Well, you'll know when to load up, so I'm actually going to load up some more blue, pick up some white, light. That's gone dark. Oh, um, is it going to stay dark, are we? I don't want it to be dark. So I turned onto the light one. Now I can't really go back up there again because that's starting to dry. So I've got to be mindful to keep away from that area now. This is only the first layer. So I keep moving down, load up with some more white, do it over here. Okay, the pressure I'm putting on with my hand is, it changes, it's heavier here. I'm more centrally pressing down into the bristles of the brush and then I'm sort of laying off a little bit as I go into the colour. Just keep moving. So when you're bringing in a fresh lot of paint, start here to see what you've got and then move in. Load up a bit more. And blend and blend and blend. I'm not working fast enough. So that's my first layer. Now you can notice that that pink, you can see that ground coming through. You might like that, and that might just be it for your, um, you might just like the first layer, the first. I think I did two on that one and it got really dark. So you can, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter. It's your sky, you, you let it dictate to you. This kind of went dark, so that's two, that's two layers. But I wanted it to be dark, so I wanted to show you the fluffy clouds. This is a number four, and this is a proper, um, what do we call them? Blending brush. Yeah, not a beauty blender. They're not soft. They are bristly and hard. So uh, you don't want them up here. I know that one's quite high, but I want my fluffy clouds to be about, about here, where this white is. So picking up white. Dry brush again, there's no water on this brush. I have some white. I'm just gonna test it out. Yeah, that's okay. Now, again, this is all about pressure and um, pushing, pushing this white around. So it's very white at the top and you've got to make a, an irregular kind of shape because clouds are fluffy and they're not, any particular shape. Now, I want that white lacy bit at the top, so I want to keep that there, and I'm gonna move all this about, because they're really light, where the light's hitting the top of the cloud, as you can see there. And I'm gonna push all that white up, and then fade it out. Now, the middle of the cloud, I want to keep blue, yeah? And you can fade out the bottom, or you can add another cloud because you've got other little wispy ones coming in underneath. So let's go again. Make sure we haven't got too much, which I did have. Too much paint on my brush. Take your time. You haven't got a lot of time. <laughs> Can't control that. So they're fluffy and they're not solid. Okay, you can see light coming through. So I would think that one would probably up there. You could have other ones coming in across it. So you build up your cloud layer. You can have wispy things. These are all wispy up here. See that one there? Sort of higher up. There's something wispy going on up there. So just make a suggestion. You don't really... Ooh, hey! Let's see if we can do something with that. Oh, it's going to be a bigger fluffy cloud now. Happy accident, but they don't look wrong. Okay, so you just keep going until you've filled out your cloud layers. These are the higher clouds and these are lower down and they're much tighter together, they're much more compact. And 
we're gonna move on to do the stems and flowers. So now we've finished with this brush. I introduced the sword this morning. <laughs> What's the sword? It's got a beautiful blade on it. That's what a sword has. And when it's wet, it's gorgeous. It's so lovely. So it does lovely, lovely lines. This, if you don't have um, a number 10 round, number eight round, does similar thing. Once it's wet and all the bristles are together. So don't worry if you have got a sword, have a go, okay? So I'm gonna work with the sword first and I'm gonna work upside down. Now, the color I want for the branches, if you got that close to look at one, and it's a lovely sort of gray brown color. So I achieved that with the blue, with my blue and burnt umber. So burnt umber, Pretend it's in there and a smidgen of Payne's Grey if you don't get the depth, the darkness that you, you're trying to get with your blue because that is a light blue. So my burnt umber and my cerulean blue mixed together made this dark. Now it needs to be wet but not soaking wet. It's like cream, single cream. This is the sword and I'm going to be having a very light pressure. I'm not even looking at it. Like, where am I going to go? Working upside down, it does your head in. Mm. So you apply pressure to start because the branches are thicker down the bottom and then you lay off as you go up. Because you don't want to go all the way too far because you've got a big flower to come in here as well. So think about that. Be mindful of where your flower is going to be. So I'm going to do another branch probably coming off the side of it. This is just one way. I can't see what I'm doing because of the light. This is just one way of doing your branches. See how wet that is? That is wet. You can't do, you, the, the paint won't travel if you haven't got this creamy texture, this. You've got to load up whatever brush you're using. So let's, let's just, we'll just do one more line. Let's just get one more line in. In fact, to use, just to use up that paint. I don't want to go too far up because I want to do some nice blooms. So I'm um, not going to use the sword now. No. Let's use the round because he does just a similar job. Two. And I don't even. I I worked upside down with the sword because I find it easier, but with the round you don't have to. So I'm going to go back over that because it's a bit dark. It's not got dark at all. Get some colour. It does a similar thing, but it's I think it's more jaggedy with the with a round. It's not dark enough. So you can go back over. But I don't want to spend time doing that because we've we've done branches time and time again. So we need to spend more time. I need to spend more time teaching you how to do the blooms and the buds. So moving on, the same brush, not the sword, you will need a round to do your flowers. Don't worry, we're nearly there. Let's see what time is. We're way ahead time. It's much quicker than this morning. Okie dokie. So I am now loading my brush, which was wet, and it's my number 10 round with white. It's pretty, pretty loaded. I'm gonna practice on the outside, just to see how loaded, too loaded, too loaded. I want that kind of transparency of the light shining through that white first lot of white petals. So we're doing this, the big petals here. And thinking about the shape as well. We don't want a tulip shape. We want this magnolia shape, which is skinny at the bottom and then it flops out at the top. I know I'm not very good at doing them. So I forget and do a tulip. <laughs> so let's just see if that's going to work? I think it will. I think you can't probably see what I'm doing. So I am light pressure to start because it's got a thin bottom and then I press and release. So that's your first petal. Once you've done your first one you're off. They join up. 
because the, they are fat in the middle. And then we go press, get that out. And then these are sort of weird shapes. They're not uniform like a tulip. Okay, so that's moist. Oh, and I've also disconnected it from the top of the branch. That's important as well. Don't start your petal at the end of the branch because we've got... I just found it easier to add all the other bits I'm going to show you. Um, that one hasn't got a lot of pink on, but some of the ones, especially the ones I think are in, that are actually in Japan or wherever, are really pink. Some of the really, really bright pink. So I'm going to do a really, really bright pink just as a contrast. So keeping that white on there i'm just going to load up with pink and go straight from the bottom and do the same thing hmm, too much pink oh i kind of I want to kind of fade it out into that okay that's pretty much it for the petals i mean if you look closely there is a line of pink the, the pink actually goes there's a line going up through the centre. Depends how how realistic you want it to be. So um, that is one flower. Let's do the shell around the outside. So this is sap green. I use sap green, and to make it more of yellow, yellowy green, I use cadmium yellow, and. If I wanted to make it a darker green, you just add Payne's Grey or a lighter green again, you just put white in it. So this is sap green here. So I don't think that's the right green. So I'm going to yellow it up and see what that does as my first green. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm making a little shell to encase the petals so and that's just your first green now I want the next layer to be darker so I'm going to add some paint grey that's around more around the bottom so I'm starting to come out it's too, too dark I'm starting to come outside of the petal area so I want it dark it's not showing And then we need to obviously attach it. There's little like buds almost coming out here. And these can be repeated little bud things. These are the guys that are going to come out when those ones are finished. So we need to add those on. And then let's do some buds as well. So we've got ones that haven't opened yet or they're semi-open. So same brush, just clean that off. You can do one flower at a time, or you can do multiple flowers, but remember this, bl this blending thing with the pink works best when the white behind it is moist. So if you go ahead and do everything white and then go back to do the pink, it might not blend so well. So I would do one flower at a time. Um, let's do a bud. So a bud is, where would a bud be? Let's just put one in here. Just a load of white in there, Bridget. So it is, it is just that. Let's do another one there. Oh, I almost want to make that one tomorrow. Let's don't. Let's put some pink on. There's a little bit of pink on that bud, but that probably won't show. Let's get the green on. Clear it off. Go back in with the green. I can't see if that's black or green there. Let's connect it on. Always test it out. Just give it a little home. So it's a lot about pressure and um, getting that darker because that needs to be dark down the bottom. I'm going to connect it on somehow. I think we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Got any questions? 
Just sit quiet, you lot. Yeah. <laughs> <Just concentrate. laughs> Do you want me to just stay here all night? Because I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy. I love doing these. Okay, I think I can't tell you anymore. There's, I mean, you might want to do a leaf. I don't think there is any leaves. I didn't see any leaves. Not usually. No, no, it's just flowers and it's so much easier, isn't it? But they're big. Get, get, get those blooms big. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to you know. Way. Nice and big. So that, your centre one is two. And then that press and goes out to the side. So so be bold if you want. You know, or you might want to do tiny little ones, like a big tree. Just like that. Just like that. Right. <laughs> There's a lot to think Why about. Like but try no. <laughs> try and work hastily. You have an hour and a half.